Hello everyone, my name is Chow, and today we're going to talk a little bit about an add-on that I really like to use a lot. It's called Citrina Buff Frames. Um, a lot of people are probably already familiar with it. Um, those that are not, I think you'll find it really useful. Um, as for most of my videos, this is going to be for players who are playing on a Wrath of the Lich King server, so 3.3.5. Uh, if you're playing on retail, I don't think this add-on is supported anymore. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you can use this add-on to um, uh, improve your gameplay. So uh, I'm going to do this in a little bit different format from a lot of my other videos. Most of my other videos are done, uh, they're edited, and they'll have like cutscenes of gameplay and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that here, I'm just going to kind of do it on the cuff. So it'll be a little bit more informal, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to go through everything and, and answer any questions you might have. So um, if I don't get to a question and you have something else that you want to ask, you can of course drop a message in the comments below or message me in game. On Horde side, I play under the name Zeal and G, and then whatever the class is. On Alliance side, it's going to be Chow, and then whatever the class is, CHA. Uh, okay, so let's talk about it first. So to open it up, you're going to type in SBF options, and that'll bring you to the screen here. So you'll see your buffs and debuffs, and you can kind of see how I've already got it set up. By default, it doesn't look like this, but you can make it look like whatever you want, and I'll show you what I've done to configure mine here. So your buffs and then your debuffs, I've added a combat buff section. So you can create a new frame down here by just hitting this and making a new frame. And when you make a new frame, they look like this. This is what they initially start off looking like. And you can change this to look like whatever you want. So you name it whatever you want. So go to the frame name here, and you can type in you know, ASDF, and that's what it is now. And then when you go over here, you can now toggle to ASDF, right? You can change whether it's going to be on a player, on the pet, the target, whatever party you want. It doesn't really make a difference. You can set up any kind of buff debuff that you want to do. And you can say whether you want to show buffs or debuffs or both. You could show everything on one buff frame if you want to. Uh, you can make it click through or not. Um, whitelist, and it says right on there, show me nothing except what I say to. Blacklist being the opposite of that. So when you, this is important when you go to filters, and you could filter out certain things. So an example of this would be Chill of the Throne. When you're inside Ice Crown Citadel, you have a Chill of the Throne debuff, which is present all the time. The reason this is problematic is because if you have a debuff always present that you don't care about, you're not going to do anything different when you have Chill of the Throne. You're not going to change the way you play, you're not going to do anything else differently, you're just going to play like you normally would. So what happens is you condition yourself to ignore your debuff frame. That's what happens. And then you wonder why players ignore, uh, you know, they get uh, necrotic plague or they get combustion or something like that and they don't pay attention to it, it's because they're conditioning themselves most of the time, since most people just rate ICC, uh, they condition themselves to ignore this really important feature of your user interface, which is the debuff frame. So I would recommend filtering that out. And the way you do that is you would type in under your, whatever your debuff frame is, so right now ASDF, I think we've got it set up for buffs and debuffs, we're gonna blacklist uh, certain things. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna type in in for name, equals chill of the throne, right? And now chill of the throne is not going to show up under this, but everything else will. So then if I click out of this, I'm going to see all my buffs and debuffs under this frame. Um, right now I'm going to have buffs, but if I would use like uh, other things, they show up here as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that's going to give me a debuff that I, that I wouldn't be able to use for a while. I don't, have um, I don't think really a lot is going to, but anyway, that's where that would show up, okay? So if I had a debuff. So we're going to go back in, not even, no, sorry, uh, SPF options again, and we're going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of this one just because I don't need it. Uh, to remove a frame, you're just going to make sure you have the current frame selected and remove frame. It's super easy. Uh, let's go back to buffs. So I've got mine set up to blacklist, so show me everything except what I say not to. Um, there's really nothing that I don't want to see for my buffs because I only have my buff showing you go to layout out of combat. Uh, when I'm in combat, I have a different frame set up that lets me filter out buffs that I actually care about. Uh, but before the pull, before we actually get in combat, I would like to see every buff I have. You have time and you're not in combat to kind of peruse through the buffs. Uh, once you're in combat, you don't need to see whether you have kings or whether you have blessing of might or whatever it is. You're not going to do anything differently play-wise, so you're not going to change your rotation or anything like that because you don't have kings, right? You might be irritated at your paladins for not buffing you when you die or not buffing before the pull, but you're not going to change your play style. So you don't need that information displayed on your UI. You can just get rid of that. 
Uh, this isn't going to keep it cleaner, and it's not going to distract you uh, from things that you don't need. So you can get rid of that stuff. Um, you could change the scaling. So if you hit big, right now it scales at 1.0. So by default, it goes from 0.5 to 2.0. If you hit big, you can make them really big, um, gigantic if you want to. Um, I don't think there's any reason to, to want to do that, but I keep mine about uh, 1.0 normally. And then um, for like my, my combat buffs, I have those slightly larger at 1.5. And my debuffs, I have those at 2.0. Um, I want my debuffs to be the largest of any of the buffs and debuffs that I'm looking at because those are the most important. But in combat, like if I have hysteria, I'd like to be able to see that readily. So I have those showing up really visible as well. Um, go back over here. So other things that you could do, you can just change the, how it's sorted, the number of buffs you have displayed. Uh, you can set this to whatever you want. I think it goes, I think it can be infinite, but I mean, there's only so many buffs you can actually get. Um, you can change the opacity. So if you want to turn these to make a little bit more opaque, um, you could turn them way down. So you could have it set up so that in combat you could still see your buffs, but they're just almost invisible. You could do that if you want to. Um, I'd rather just set up a whole different frame so that, um, which you would need to do that for anyway. So uh, buffs per row. So you can set that however you want, whether you want to show rows or columns. Um, you can't see it now because they're growing up. But if I had it grow down and I set change the anchor point, now they're going down and then over this way. So, or I guess the way you're looking on the camera over this way. Um, you can change the spacing, so I can change this, so I can go up to 11 on here and spread them out a little bit more. I'll go back down and change that. So I'm going to change this, so I want, I want my buffs to grow, uh, we're going to go rows again. I want them to grow left, and I want the anchor point on the top, so that they kind of populate over this way and then down, um, so that I, they're staying on the very edge of my screen. Um, icons, you can use this to change how the icon is displayed, whether you want it to be bigger or, lar or smaller or whatever in relationship. Um, so that's another thing that you can set up if you want to. Um, but yeah, that's uh, if you click on this thing, it'll let you set up whether you want uh, SBF uh, border icons or something like that. You can do that. Um, do not show them or do show them. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it depends on whether you have SBF. Uh, uh, excuse me, it's, it depends on if you want those showing or not. So like for my debuffs, I can click on this and I don't have them. It's just kind of this really small looking uh, border. I prefer to have the borders showing because you can do things like um, have them colored by the spell type. So it's really easy to see what kind of buff or debuff you have. So I prefer to leave them on, but you don't, you don't have to if you don't want to. If you have something that will make them look a little bit cleaner, you can do that. Um, timer is pretty straightforward. So you have a regular text timer and the expiring text color. So, and you can set this to whatever color you want. So like by default, um, you can, I think, I think they have a default color, like an orangish color for a normal and like a yellowish one whenever it's, or for normal it's yellowish and I think red it's like this kind of pinkish reddish color. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, and you can do the red, green, and blue to pick like specific class colors if you want to do that. You can just look, easily look those up look up class color, color picker, or something like that, and you'll be able to find out exactly what it is. Um, you can color debuff by type, so I could change this so that um, if I have like a magic debuff, then it's blue, if I have a disease, it's green, or whatever, um, so, or poison is green, and disease is kind of this brownish color. So you could set that up if you want to as well. I don't feel like that's necessary because I have the, the border tooltips colored that way, but you could do it if you wanted to. Um, you can justify the font, so wh like where you want it to be centered, so I want it over here farther, over here farther, you could do that. Uh, you could change the font size. Um, I like mine, I don't really like mine super huge, so I really try and keep it right around this, you know, 14. Um, I don't think it gets infinitely larger. I think your frame has to be a lot bigger for the text to keep going up. I mean, you can go up to 34, but you'd have to have a bigger frame to do that. I think by the default one, it's not supported. Change the font. Whether you outline the font, I would always recommend outlining it because you don't know what the background, like here, if I'm writing inside of a fiery place like this, like maybe uh, Halion in the Fire Realm, um, there's a lot of fire, it might be harder to see the red text, but if I'm in Icecrown Citadel, I'm not going to have any problem with that. So depending on where you're at, the color of the text could make a big difference, but if you outline it, it doesn't really matter where you are. You'll always be able to clearly see whatever the text says. Um, the timer, the reason I use uh, less than 60 seconds only for my debuffs is because if I've got like exhaustion or um, sated, 
uh, let's say if somebody used bloodlust on me, um, I don't really care about the time on that unless it's about to expire. I'm not going to do anything differently with the way I play my character unless it's going to expire soon, and then I might want to change the way I use cooldowns and things like that if I think I'm going to get another bloodlust. Uh, so in those situations, I care about it. Otherwise, I don't care. Um, you can turn on, if you have auras, you can have it say NA. So like if I have a permanent debuff, I, it'll say NA for auras. Um, I can click that off if I don't want to see that. So if I just have a debuff that's just constantly on, you can turn that on or off. Um, you can show tenths of a second. I don't, um, I don't see any point in that because, well, for me personally, I play with 142 MS pretty much all the time. Um, maybe, best case scenario, I'll get down to like 120. I'm never below that. Um, I'm usually between like 130 and 150 because I play in North America and I'm playing in a server that's over in Europe. So it's just never going to be better than that for me. Uh, but anyway, that's how you would do that. You can change the level of frame. This like, determines what um, will show on top of it. So if you change the frame level to be way up on the top, even if you open your map, you'll still see the debuffs. So you'll never be able to get rid of them. By default, they're about where you want them to be. Uh, and then this is like the position. So you can change it. So if I click this, it's going to move them on the y-axis up. If I turn it back down, it'll move them back in the normal position. You can kind of set this wherever you want. I can move them this way and that way, depending on how I want them centered. Uh, the counts. So the way the counts work uh, when you're in configuration mode is they populate in number order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Over here, you can see that my 39th buff is right over here. So in game, what this is, is it's the stat count. So if I have, uh, let's say, I'm getting uh, my combustion debuff on Halion. If I have three stacks of that, that's what that'll be. Most of the time, you just have a single debuff or, or a single buff, and so you don't have a stat count to keep, to keep track of, so it doesn't matter. But potentially, you could. Um, I come to this and change my orders. Anyway, that's how that works. Um, and again, you can change the color on this one if you want to, um, to kind of match a the theme. So like my warrior kind of has this like red and brownish, um, like a red maroon theme coming, uh, color theme going on. So I kind of have this kind of a bright red, fiery looking theme for him, so which is perfectly fine. Um, but you can set up whatever you want. Bars, you can use this if you want to. Um, I don't really think it's a great idea because um, if you're going to use bars, you might as well just use Nikino which is another really lightweight add-on that does a better job of showing buffs and debuffs in bar form. Um, you wouldn't use it to keep track of all your buffs and debuffs like you would for this add-on, but if there's specific things like trinket procs or um, buffs you get from like you know, whatever your spec is, like I use it to keep track of slam procs, so I'll show you what it looks like really fast, so I should DK. So I keep track of my slam procs, death wish, recklessness, uh, when I get in rage for a, my death ringers will procs, Berserker Rage, Blood Rage, and then does the, and it's the enemy targets, so these are all on the target. Do they have Demoralizing Shout or Demoralizing War? Do they have Thunder Armor or Exposed Armor? And do I have Deep Wounds on them? Like those are the kinds of things I keep track of. Um, pretty, pretty easy. Um, that's all you'd really want for that. Um, but I think that's a better way of keeping track of it than using this particular add-on. Your names, so you can show your names over here. Um, if you you know, do you want to see the name of the player that has given you this buff, uh, or the name of the buff, uh, rather? Um, I don't think there's any reason to show that, but you could if you wanted to. And then um, maybe like if you wanted to see who gave you uh, Hand of Sacrifice or something like that, you could probably show that there. Uh, so it's the name, and then it shows you the format for it. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's mostly the spell name that you're showing, actually. I, anyway, I don't use it. I don't think there's any reason to use it. Your expiry. So when you're looking at times here, you see how there's like a, a timer text color and then there's the expiration text color. So this is how you would change that. You would go to expiry and you can change what you want the expiration to show at. So if I only care about buffs and debuffs that have less than 120 seconds or something like that, I could set the expiration to be two minutes out, right? Uh, let's say I'm keeping track of my shouts on my warrior. I don't care about um, a shout that has less than 120 seconds left on it because they only last for like two minutes anyway, or four minutes, whatever they're, when they're buffed, or five minutes, whatever it is. So they don't have a really long duration, so there's no reason to show that stuff. Uh, but you can, you can set it up however you want to. 
um, and then you would change the expiry text color under the timer section. The filters is a really important thing, so I don't have any filters for my buffs. For my combat buffs, I want to see things that are important. So, is my flask still active? I will do something different if I know my flask is about to expire. I will open up my bag and use another flask um, as soon as I have a, a chance where I can move around on not attacking or something like that. I'll use another flask if my flask is about to expire. If I have a hand of protection, I'm not going to use you know recklessness and, and uh, death wish because I can't attack with hand of protection active. So those are going to change the way I play the game. Um, so like if somebody's protecting me like on a new rack. Uh, hand of Salvation. Um, with Hand of Salvation, I know I can go full bore on DPS, so I'll play differently. Hysteria. I play differently if I have Hysteria. So these are things that change the way I'm going to proceed, and therefore, there's something that I want to see when it's in combat. Okay? Uh, that's how you want to set that up. The way you set up your debuff filter, so Chill on the Throne, so N equals Chill on the Throne. And you can edit these, so hit Edit, and it brings over here, and you can change what it is. In is the one I do for everything. So in is the name, and then whatever the buff is, is the debuff. Um, there's other filters over here that are kind of set up that you can use. Filters in use, it shows you the ones you've already got. Um, so that's a, another way to set that up. Spells, pretty straightforward. Um, your buff flowing, I don't really use this either. You could, I suppose you could do something with like the way the buffs go from one frame to another. I don't set that up. Um, and then your, your global options, so um, you could set this if you want to change like the way um, disable button facade and SPF if you didn't want to show that. Um, do not show total timers or whatever. Those are things you could set up as well. And then profile. So you could take this and then copy um, other like other characters don't have to start from scratch. You could take the same profile, copy it over to another character, and then just make a few tweaks for what that character cares about. So I don't care on a mage if I have Hysteria, because I don't do any physical DPS on a mage, but I do care if I have Power Infusion. So I might take the same layout on a mage, change the colors around a little bit, change the filter, so I've edited my filter so that instead of Hysteria, I now care, do I have uh, Power Infusion, or do I have Focus Magic, or something like that. Uh, and so that's something you might want to care about. Um, I wouldn't, I would copy profiles to make a new profile, rather than just using a default profile and then changing it. Because when you use a default profile, you're using that for all your characters. So you want to be careful about messing a profile up for everybody. Um, but anyway, that's how this add-on works. It's pretty straightforward. Just keep in mind that you want to make sure you're positioning stuff in a way that you can see it clearly. You have a small, just to recap, you have a really small field of view. When you're looking at, let's say I'm looking at my action bars down here somewhere, so my eyes are looking down here to see what's coming off cooldown. And I, the reason I have this action bar here is so that I can be looking on, on my character here and I can see when Bloodthirst or Whirlwind is coming off cooldown and they're usable rather than looking all the way down here. Um, the only reason I have these action bars here even showing is like if you're controlling the Abomination, I need to be able to see my 1, 2, 3, 4. But this action bar is mostly just to keep track of like, okay, what abilities can I be using? And they don't even have to be 1, 2, 3, 4. They can be kind of whatever. Um, that's why I use this on a lot of characters. Um, my debuffs, I want to be able to like look in the middle of my screen and clearly see my debuffs. I want to be able to look at my screen and I can see when I get this big glowing red slam proc. I don't have to look down and see the slam proc. I can just know that I have a slam proc. Um, the same thing over here. When I get a big de uh, buff on the far side over here, I can see that I got a buff over here without necessarily having to look away. My peripheral vision can pick that up without having to focus away from the middle of the screen. I can just kind of see it in the, in the background. Um, but you want to continue to focus on what's going on and, and try and avoid letting yourself tunnel vision too much. Uh, but anyway, that's how you would use this add-on um, to position it in a way that's helpful, and hopefully this is a helpful tutorial. So thanks for watching.